Want to expand what your agent can actually do? Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to connect tools to your agent from an MTP server using the AI toolkit in Visual Studio Code. So whether it's browsing the web with Playwright or tapping into other external capabilities, connecting tools is how your agent gets things done. So why connect your agent to tools in the first place? Tools give your agent the ability to go beyond just chatting. They let your agent take action. Now, depending on what you connect, your agent can gain the ability to browse and interact with websites. It can access and manipulate files. It can integrate with enterprise systems, and it could even process real-time data from APIs. To make all of that possible, your agent needs a way to use those tools. And that's where MCP comes in. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol, and it's a standard that lets your agent interact with external tools and services in a structured way. You could think of it as a bridge between your agent and the outside world. Before MCP, connecting a model to external tools was quite messy. Every integration was custom, time-consuming, and often tied to specific vendors. But with MCP, things got a whole lot easier. Instead of building everything from scratch, you get plug and play tools, vendor agnostic architecture, built in security practices, and the ability to add new capabilities in minutes, not months. So how does this all actually work? Let's take a closer look at the MCP architecture and how its client server design creates a secure and scalable way for agents to interact with external tools. So at the top, we start with the host, which plays a crucial role as the primary interface through which users interact with the protocol. Examples include code editors like VS Code or custom-built agents. On the next level down, we have the client, which facilitates interaction between the hosts and MCP servers. Then we have the servers, and they're responsible for handling requests from the MCP client and providing appropriate responses. Finally, on that bottom level, we have the server features, which can consist of resources, prompts, and tools. Now, you may be wondering, where can I find MCP servers? Great question. Microsoft has a selection of servers available, and we'll explore one in this video. However, you can also find MCP servers on GitHub. I like to find mine within the Model Context Protocol repository. That's where you can find third-party servers, community servers, and frameworks for building your own MCP servers. So let's put an MCP server into action. I'm going to walk through how to create an intelligent browser automation agent using the Playwright MCP server. This will give the agent the ability to navigate websites, extract information, and handle complex web interactions. So if you're not familiar with Playwright, it's a browser automation framework that lets you programmatically control web pages. It's kind of like giving your AI agent a set of hands to click buttons or fill out forms or scrape content from websites just like a human would. All right, so here in the AI toolkit, I'm in the agent builder and I created a brand new agent. I call this agent browser agent. For the model, I'm using GPT-4.0. If you scroll all the way down to the tools section, that's where you can go in and add an MCP server and select the tools for the server. So selecting the plus MCP server button there, at the top, you're going to receive this wizard that gives you the option to add a new server. If you have any other servers that have been added, then those will show here. So right now I have a demo one that I had used in the past, but for now we're going to select add server. Next, you'll see we have three different ways you can proceed from here. So you can either use a featured MTP server, and these are going to be ready to use MTP servers built by Microsoft. We then have the option to connect to an existing MTP server. And so if you have an MTP server that's running, then AI Toolkit can connect to that. And then the final option is to create a new MTP server. So if you've created something custom, you can select that option and then connect to it. So because Playwright is a Microsoft MTP server, I'm going to select Use Featured MCP Servers. And we can see we have three here, Playwright, Azure, as well as Check Documentation. I'm going to select the Playwright one. And then it's checking whether Node.js is installed. And then from here, I need to enter a server ID. You can either accept a default ID, or if you have your own that you want to define, you can do that as well. 
I'm going to just select the default one and press enter. Next, you'll need to select which tools you want to enable. So while that's loading, here we are. So there's a lot of tools available within the Playwright MTP server. And because we want to ensure that our agent is very feature rich in terms of the tools that it can use, we're actually going to add all of these tools. However, there are some essential ones that I will call out. Uh, ones around navigation to so like go to, go back, go forward, reload. We have ones around like capture that you can use. And that one is going to be necessary for getting like screenshots, PDF videos. So we're going to add all these in for this browser agent that we're creating. So you'll select, okay. All right, so now we need to verify that the server and more so its tools have been added. So back here within the agent builder in the tool section, I see that 25 tools have been added and I can also see which particular server this is. So this is where that ID from earlier that I accepted as the default will display. So if you wanna give this a more descriptive name, I definitely recommend doing that. And then if I scroll down or click the down arrow here for the tools list, these are all the tools that got added. Okay, so closing that back up. So before we actually run this agent, there's a couple things that we need to do, such as defining its behavior. And we can do that within the system prompt section. So in the define your agent's behavior video, I did talk about the generate system prompt. If you're challenged with creating system prompt from scratch, definitely consider using this feature. If you select it, you can describe your task and then the AI toolkit will actually generate a prompt for you. And they're pretty detailed. I actually already happen to have one, so I'm going to paste that one in here. I'm not going to read it in its entirety because it's pretty detailed, but I do want to call out some key things that can really help make your system prompts very effective. So starting off with defining what the role is of the agent, and in this case, it's a web automation specialist. And then down from here, I call out the capabilities of this agent as well as the approach that it would actually take. So if we take a look at, let's say, data extraction, for example, that's one of its capabilities. It should be able to extract structured data in JSON. It provides confidence scores for anything that's been extracted. We can validate the data completeness and accuracy, and it can also handle pagination and in infinite scroll scenarios. So for that system prompt, again, if you're not as skilled with creating system prompts, utilize the generate system prompt feature. I cannot recommend that more enough. But in this case, I have one that's already been created. And then the next thing that I need to add in is going to be the user prompt itself. So I really want to give you the full effect of the tools that we added down below for this agent. And in order to do that, that really is going to boil down to what my actual user prompt is that I am submitting to the agent. So I have a user prompt here that I feel is going to really be able to demonstrate the agent's ability to utilize a good amount of these tools that we've selected below in the tool section. And so I'll read what I have here. So I'm instructing the agent to navigate to github.com slash April Gittins, which is my GitHub profile, and then provide a comprehensive analysis that includes the repository structure and organization, any recent activity and contribution patterns, documentation quality assessment, any technology stack identification, community engagement metrics, and then any notable projects and their purposes. And then also I want it to include screenshots at key steps and provide any actionable insights. Now, before I run this, I actually had an epiphany. I'm currently using GPT-40 via GitHub models. Now, although it's free to use this model, it is rate limited. And I have a feeling that I'm actually going to hit a rate limit when I press run, given the amount of tasks that we're giving the agent to do. So I'm actually going to switch my model to another one that I have. I'm using Claude 3.7 Sonnet, so hopefully we don't have any rate limit issues. And then leaving everything else the same, nothing else changes, I'm going to go ahead and click Run. All right, so that is running, and I'm now able to see what's happening on the right within the prompt itself. Okay, this is actually looking pretty good. 
And let's see, it's calling tools. It's still running. I can see that it has actually pulled up my GitHub profile. One thing that you can't see on the screen, and I'll bring it over shortly so you can see it, is that it does open a browser window to GitHub, uh, more so that link that I pass in in the user prompt where it says navigate to github.com slash April Giddens. This is still running and I think I made a really good decision in changing my models. So let's start taking a look to see what is happening here. And then as we scroll down, hopefully the, the agent will complete its task. So in the top we have for the model response, it says it's navigating to the link that I gave it, and it'll provide a comprehensive analysis. And so it's using this browser and navigate tool. This is an indication that this is one of the tools that was called. And so it passes in whatever the URL is. And that URL is what we added in the prompt itself. Then from the tool response, so again, the tool being browser navigate, this is the information that I'm getting from the tool response. I have the URL, I have the page title, and then it says there's a page snapshot. If you recall, I did put into the prompt to include screenshots at key steps. So maybe that's what that's referring to. We'll find out here shortly. And as I scroll down, this is very much the information that I have on my GitHub profile. So all of this looks great and consistent. Uh, the next one I have here is for a model response and it's taking a screenshot of the profile page to better visualize it. So browser take screenshot is another tool and it saved it as a file that's named github april gittens profilepng And that's probably that image that I saw uh, when this had first started running. And then we have the tool response itself and I can see where the screenshot has been saved. Coming on down, looking through the contributions and <laughs> I don't have a ton of contributions um, based on what it uh, can see and what it's running, but it's doing quite the look. And I wanna bring this over so you can see it because what just happened on my screen is as the agent's going through my actual GitHub repo, it's literally navigating to different pages in here. So it first was on the April Gittens one, the main page, but now it navigated to one of the repos that I created for Fashion Forecast. So I can expect that it's actually going through and pretty much scraping what I have here within these repos. So let me hide this and come back over to looking at the output. All right, so if we make our way down, here's that image that it took earlier, that screenshot. So that's me. And then the next model response is navigating to the repositories page to understand the repo structure and organization. And so it's saying I have 10 repos. I'm assuming that's what that one means there. And then we get the tool response from that. So you'll notice this pattern when we are looking at the prompt, uh, the output from the agent. We have the model response, which you can consider that to be the agent response. And then we have the tool response. And that's what we're getting from the tool that's been called or uh, invoked. Even here, I can see that there was an error. So... This is why it's important to read the output that comes from the, from the model itself. And this is likely due to uh, something related to navigation. All right. So it's now trying to navigate directly to the repo. And it's almost like it's learning from um, the errors that it's running into. So now it's using the browser navigate tool. And it's trying that URL for that fashion forecast one. I don't know why it chose that one in particular, but... It's doing its best to analyze what's in that repo. It looks like we've had some success somewhere in gathering the screenshots for that fashion forecast repo. So I'm going to assume here that it's been successful with analyzing that repository itself because this is definitely the content that I have in the repo. All right, so despite only having 10 repos in under my GitHub profile, this is actually going to take a while to go through. So I can only imagine if you have more. I'm going to select stop running so we can stop running this. And I'll show you what you can do if you want to now take the setup that you have and actually get the code for that.
So right here within the area on the right side of the agent builder where you can view the prompt, there's this button that says view code. If I select this, it's going to give me the actual code for this setup. And at the top, I do have some instructions that I will need to follow. So to connect the model with the MCP tools in Python, there's a um, pip install you need to run as well. And then below that, this is literally the code that I would need. So from here, this is a really great transition from going from the agent builder to now actually working still within Visual Studio Code, but in the context of an actual Python file. And so whatever you're building, you can leverage this to your needs. But this was a really great migration, though, going from the prompt builder to now actually doing things within a Python file itself. With the AI toolkit, Adding powerful tools like this is just a click away. Download the AI Toolkit at aka.ms slash AI Toolkit to start building your own intelligent agents today.